Hello, my name is Forrest Bonner. I'm a family nurse practitioner student here at Auburn University, and today I'm going to talk to you about Lyme's disease. Lyme's disease is caused by a bacteria that is transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected black leg tick or deer tick. It can affect multiple human organ systems. Typical signs and symptoms present within days to weeks following the bite of an infected tick and can include erythema migrans, which is a bull's eye shaped rash, fever, lymphadenopathy, arthralgia, myalgia, fatigue, and headache. The organism can infect the nervous system causing facial paralysis and the cardiovascular system causing carditis with atrioventricular heart block, a rare condition that can be fatal. The average incubation period is 7 to 10 days. In most common cases, the tick must be attached for 36 to 48 hours or more before Lyme's disease bacteria can be transmitted. So what puts people at risk? Although cases have been reported in all 50 states, Lyme disease is most frequently reported in the upper Midwest and northeastern United States. So persons in these areas who live, work, or participate in recreational activities within wooded areas are at greater risk for contracting Lyme disease. So the three key questions that are essential to ask in the workup for Lyme disease are, has the patient been recently bitten by a tick? And do they currently have or have they had a bullseye rash? And then you need to do a complete investigation of the patient's symptoms. So the first question, have they been bitten by a tick? About one third of patients diagnosed with Lyme disease will recall being bitten by a tick or removing a tick from their skin. Patient currently have or have they had a bullseye rash? This is important because you're assessing for erythema migrans presents as a round, flat, or raised erythematous lesion that expands in diameter over days to weeks. Next, you would want to do a complete investigation of the patient's past symptoms. This is really essential in staging disease as they are separated into three stages. Early Lyme disease is stage one, early disseminated Lyme disease is stage two, and chronic persistent Lyme disease is stage three. Essentially, the difference in stages is the first stage just starts with uh, common flu-like symptoms. So you have fever, headache, malaise, arthralgia, and regional lymphopathy. Progresses into all over body aches, joint pain, chest pain, palpitations, and conjunctivitis. In your later stages, you can have a Lyme disease carditis and also some neurological impairment, which is memory loss, dementia, confusion, and difficulty concentrating. As you move into those later stages of Lyme disease, you can have some significant complications as it migrates through the organ systems, and this may require further evaluation, uh, admission, and referral to a specialist. So the top three physical exam components would be a dermatological assessment, a cardiac assessment, and a neurological assessment. And the reason why you're trying to look to see if a patient has erythema migrans or appears in 80% of the patients, the cardiac assessment, you really need to see if uh, the patient has any indications of heart block, pericarditis, or palpitations, as these could be evidence of later stages of the disease process. So you'd want to do a 12-lead EKG to rule out heart blocks and pericarditis, auscultation of heart tones, develop chest pain, have second or third degree AV blocks, or a first degree heart block with prolonged PR interval. Um, these patients really need to be admitted and continuously monitored as it could result in some pretty significant cardiac abnormalities. Make sure that you do a good neurological assessment, assess it for memory loss, dementia, confusion, difficulty concentration, concentrating, and peripheral neuropathy. Lastly, you want to confirm with blood testing as Lyme disease is currently diagnosed with a two-stage testing process uh, to measure the body's production of antibodies. Common treatments for Lyme disease and the outcomes. Patients with Lyme disease treated early with appropriate antibiotics usually experience a full recovery without any prolonged deficits. The treatment of Lyme disease is a 14-day course of antibiotics. For adults, the number one choice is doxycycline, 100 milligrams twice a day orally. And for children, it's amoxicillin, 50 milligrams per kilogram per day orally divided into three doses. The three priority teaching components that must be addressed with patients or early recognition and antimicrobial therapy are key to successful recovery. Uh, patients must take their entire antibiotic prescription until the prescription is finished, and then they need to return within one to two weeks for reevaluation of some prevention. Patients should protect themselves against tick exposure by applying repellents that contain 20 to 30 percent DEET uh, or oil of lemon eucalyptus on exposed skin or clothing. Uh, make sure that you tumble dry your clothes in a dryer on high heat for 10 minutes to kill all ticks on clothing. This has been the presentation of Lyme disease by Forrest Barn. Thank you.